Today we're gonna to be looking at how to use a sock and several other quick tricks to capture better audio for your next adventure film. Hey guys, Levi Allen here, and welcome to the Left Coast. Today we're gonna to be talking about all about the gear that I use to capture audio on location. The quick takeaway for those that already know a bit about audio is, one, I really recommend getting a good windscreen for your on-camera shotgun mic. Two, I extremely recommend getting a lav mic that can plug into a little recorder or your phone. And three, I really, really recommend having someone who knows a lot more about audio mastering than you look after the mastering of your film so that way it sounds as best as it can. Okay, so quick tips aside, now we're gonna dive into the individual pieces of gear in my audio kit and how I use them. The first type of microphone I'm talking about you're probably familiar with, it's called an onboard shotgun microphone. The one that I use is actually the older Rode video mic. I purchased this one uh, for one, because it was cheaper than the VideoMic Pro, but for another reason, it has this Ryko shock mount. When I purchased this, the VideoMic Pro had just been released in the version that had the Ryko mount, but I really, really like this Ryko shock mount. This mount is fantastic because you don't have to fiddle with those little elastics that a lot of people have come to hate with other onboard camera shotgun mounts. So this mic stayed on my camera at all times while shooting untethered foot. So I really relied on these on-camera shotgun mics to make sure that we were getting some sound of the activities and the things that were happening. I'm gonna talk about setting your levels later, but setting your levels with these microphones and making sure you're in good distance is actually really important to getting good audio as well. <laughs> this is really oh, the most inspiration I've ever seen in my life. Like just this feeling, you know, this is euphoria for everybody, man. And ah! I just hope it inspires people to get out there and do what they want to do. That's all I ever did. Whether it be this or something else, like everybody has a passion within them. Like you just have to find it and apply yourself and the, the rewards are unreal. Please, whatever onboard shotgun mic you're using, please get a good windscreen or dead cat, whatever you want to call it. These are super cheap, under 20 bucks on Amazon. And when the wind starts picking up, you're going to be able to use that audio. The default foamy little covers that come with it really don't do a good job at all. Upgrade to a simple windscreen. It's gonna make your life so much better and you're gonna get audio that's usable. Okay, so the next tool that I rely heavily upon is a small audio recorder and a lav microphone. There's several different setups you can get, but I'm using the Zoom H1 with a lav microphone from a company called Squid Audio. You can turn these on, set the gain, hit record, put it on hold, put it in the talent's pocket, and you're recording. That's it, no wireless interference, none of those issues, one battery to deal with. When you're done, you just hit stop record and you have great audio captured on your talent. Okay, so that's the lab setup that I use. I still don't have a wireless system. I trust these guys a lot, and frankly, they just work. Okay, so the third audio device I'm gonna talk about, I'm just gonna talk about really quick, and that is one of these XLR preamp recorders. There's a lot of different options out there. I'm using the DR70D, works fantastic. And this is the recorder I used when I was shooting my sit-down interviews with Spencer. I borrowed an NTG3 shotgun microphone, which is a really fantastic shotgun microphone comes with a, a little bit of a fantastic price as well, but I was getting amazing results just running that straight into the recorder and doing a dual sound setup that way and syncing it up later in post. I was talking about the importance of having a good audio layer to your film, just adds a fantastic texture. A great way to kind of amp this texture up is using a stereo microphone. Now, the best part about this little H1 that I use is that it has built-in stereo microphones. Now, if you just mount this on your camera right on top, you're gonna get a lot of handling noise of your camera straight into the microphone. That's not good, you're not gonna like that. What I bought was this small little shock mount from Amazon, and you can fit the Zoom H1 directly inside of it. And then what I use is just a simple mini-to-mini -mini headphone connector cable to plug this microphone directly into the camera. 
and then I'm getting fantastic stereo audio directly into my camera. Now these microphone capsules are definitely sensitive to wind noise. So I recommend getting a foam filter that can go right over top to reduce that or the sock I talked about earlier. You know, if you are in a pinch, sometimes I have forgotten to bring a wind filter, especially for this little zoom stereo microphone. Now if you take off your sock and pull it over the microphone, you can get sort of a makeshift windscreen just in a pinch. But hey, it's so much better than not having one at all. Okay, so now I'm gonna talk quick about setting your levels. Uh, in a lot of situations, you really do wanna set what's called manual levels. And what I do is I either put the microphone on my talent or I'm using the onboard shotgun mic on my camera and I try to find what's the loudest sound that I'm gonna get. And I try to point at that sound or get someone to yell for me and dial back the gain so that way I'm not peaking out my audio channels. For a basic reference, I like setting sort of the peaks of my dialogue around negative six dB. So as you watch that audio spike up on your meters, I try to set kind of the peaks of those audio at around negative six. That gives me good overhead so that way if something does get quite a bit louder or if someone laughs, I'm not gonna clip as soon, but it also makes sure that I'm capturing audio loud enough so that way I can boost those channels and posts if I can't hear what's going on. Okay, so my last tip is something that made a huge difference in Untethered, and that is I hired someone, paid out of pocket, to do post-production sound. This is incredibly important, can't understate it, if you don't know much about EQ and if you don't know how to really bring audio to life, I really recommend trying to find someone you can work with to help do the post sound for your film. There's more tutorials coming from Untethered. We are just getting started. You can watch a playlist of them here and also you can see other ones below. I really recommend joining the Left Coast Collective, which is entirely free. It's my email newsletter where I send content directly to you and the best part is you get access directly back into my inbox. This is the best, most reliable way to ask questions and I'd love to have you along for the journey. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you learned something. If you know a lot about audio and I said something wrong, let me know in the comments. This is not my area of expertise, but uh, what questions do you guys have if you want to know more? And uh, I would just love to hear from you. Okay guys, remember, life's better when you make stuff.